Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Capuano, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Madam Chair, for being with us today. I'm sure I've got a couple of different areas I'd like to pursue. I don't know how far we'll be able to get. Um, but in your confirmation hearing, you made a comment, at least it's reported that you made a comment, addressing too big to fail has become among the most important goals of the post-crisis period, which on some levels I would agree, though I happen to think that we did address a fair amount of it. I also accept what Chairman Bernanke once said, which is reality is in perception, and the perception is we haven't done enough, so therefore we have to do more. And I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on how to do that, uh, particularly with relation to either uh, reinstituting some form of Glass-Steagall or instituting some sort of, sort of uh, market-driven uh, attempt to reduce the size of some of these uh, too-big-to-fail programs. So I think we have a broad agenda uh, that is intended to address too-big-to-fail, and we are um, putting it into effect and I think have made meaningful progress. We have um, Do you think it would be worth us l considering uh, reinstituting some form of Glass-Steagall? I, th I think that if we continue on the path that we're on of completing the Dodd-Frank rulemakings, beyond that of um, putting in place a rule that would enable a resolution by, through orderly liquidation by requiring... So you think we won't need it when you're all done? I think we have to keep watching whether or not we've succeeded in addressing this, but I believe we've Fair made enough. I, I would ask progress. you to also take a look at HR 2266, which is a market-driven attempt to uh, reduce the size of some of these institutions. I also want to talk about an editorial that I read in American Banker last week uh, that basically, in my opinion, coined a new phrase, but one that's accurate, uh, too big to jail. And it was about uh, the concern that not enough of these people that have foisted uh, their inappropriate activities on us and they oh, right, have paid a penalty on a personal basis. Some of these biggest corporations simply write a check to stay out of jail free because it's not even their money. It's corporate money. And when I read it in American Banker, it kind of puts a big under, uh, underscore to me. And I'm just wondering, do you have any concerns about the lack of personal accountability in some of the largest institutions in this world when it comes to some of the activities they participated in, not just before 208, but after 2008 as well. Well, I, d I do have concerns about those activities, and the Federal Reserve cooperates with the Department of Justice as appropriate when they, um, when they uh, take actions that um, are criminal in nature. Our, the Federal Reserve's focus is on safety and soundness. We're supervisors. But isn't of the these safety and soundness of the entire economy based on trust and good activity? It and my concern, is. to be perfectly honest, if people are not held personally accountable when they're allowed to write corporate checks, not personal checks, to just push away their ill gotten gains, and they get to keep that money and continue on and actually get raises and bonuses from those institutions. That the moral hazard says to the next guy coming down the street, the people that you have to regulate, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Do anything you want, and all we have to do is the corporation, not you, will pay a few hundred million dollars of shareholder money, by the way, not your money. You don't have a concern with that, with the Federal Reserve, by, by not having, not you, but by not having other entities hold them to personal account that it will make your job tougher going forward? Well, I agree with you that there certainly should be accountability within these organizations. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, and the last point, since we only have a minute, is I want to talk about Fannie and Freddie. Uh, I personally have always wanted to amend and, re and reform them. However, I've also thought that it's wrong. Fannie and Freddie has now pretty much paid back the money that they have borrowed from the taxpayer. I don't know if they're exactly there, but they're close to it and on their way. And yet, at the moment, they have not been allowed by our own laws to pay one penny towards the payment of that principal. There are lawsuits going on, as I'm sure you're aware. And I'm just curious, do you think that, uh, that it is fair or wise or equitable to keep any entity in a de facto bankruptcy state once they've paid back their debt? I, I think, you know, with respect to GSEs, uh, I think it is really very important for Congress to put in place a new system to address GSE reform. 
I think we still have uh, a system that uh, has systemic risk, that government funding remains critical to the mortgage sector. And I think to really get housing back on its feet, it's important for Congress to put in place a new system uh, and to explicitly decide what the role of the government uh, should be in, in helping the housing sector. Chair, the time of the uh, gentleman has expired. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Garrett, chairman of our Capital Markets Subcommittee. I thank the, ch I thank the chair and I thank Chair Yellen. Uh, congratulations.